Yes. Which is, which is easy. Okay, so sorry for the, uh, the late start. We're going to work today to actually put in a cloudy sky backdrop as part of our, our file. So this is the first time that we'll actually get photorealistic backgrounds. And so last class we did it where we had the clear sky background where it put in the, the bluish to, to almost orange halo. Uh, and today we're actually going to put a, a true background image in place. Um, we're, we need a couple things as part of it. Number one, I'm assuming for right now that you will work with the same file that we worked with last class. And in the file that I opened, I was able to convert this to the um, V-Ray proxy object, which is why we don't see much of my San Francisco left. It doesn't matter whether you ended up converting it or not converting it. The, the views are still the same. The renders are still the same. If you work through and did your texture mapping and all of that stuff, you shouldn't have to worry too much about that and we'll concentrate on the background environment. I'm going to assume for the moment that you guys got to this stage last class and not redo it. And we're going to concentrate on the, the new piece of it. So what we're going to work with today is establishing what's called a HDRI environment. And so if you were in my 135 class, remember we talked about high dynamic range imagery, which is essentially the way uh, the human eye sees the world in that we can process and adapt for low light settings and really bright light settings and be able to see all the values in between. We're going to use a special quality background image that is two things. One, it's a spherical panorama, so it goes all the way around us. And two, it is high dynamic range. And it's not the kind of high dynamic range that's been tone mapped that we can see that looks like a high dynamic range image. It's a true high dynamic range image that will change based on our physical camera settings that are established in V-Ray. So it actually adapts depending on the light settings. So I'm going to walk you through a bunch of it. But before I do that, I want to actually open up a high dynamic range image so that we can see the file itself. So I have some stored in my resources folder here. And I'll go ahead and open up, uh, let's see here. Let me open up a day. And these files are high dynamic range files. Uh, they have different extensions. Though we should be able to open them with, of course, Photoshop. See if it'll open up. Oh, that's the blurry version. Hold on. That's the environment file. Let me open this one. All right. So there it is. So it's a spherical panorama, like I talked about. This edge matches up with that edge if we were to curl it around. Furthermore, this is the center of the sky at the top, and this is the center of the sky at the bottom. In this case, this particular image was shot with a camera, maybe stitched using a series of images. It depends on the person who actually did the, the processing. And the most valuable high dynamic range images are the ones that allow the, the clouds and stuff to almost touch the horizon without any really weird objects showing up. And you can find these online. I'm going to show you links and places to find them, etc. This is a good one. There's just a little bit that's on the horizon that can be problematic. If I were to look at some of the other ones that you can get for free, like this, for example. Hold on, I have to make sure I get the right one here. There. It's, it's good. It's a nice image. We get good sun, but the mountains and the trees are going to get in the way. And they're going to show up as part of your rendering. And you wouldn't want to be rendering the city of San Francisco and then suddenly have to have an out of scale tree show up as part of the sky. It just doesn't look right. So you have to be careful when you actually pick the high dynamic range image to begin with. So on the course website, a couple things. One, under resources, if we go into the downloadable resource packages section and you scroll into the Archie 136, there is or there used to be a zip file of HDRI images. I forgot. I moved them under this quick rendering setups. So if we click there, it takes us, oh, thanks. 
You gotta love it. Let's see if I fixed it over here. <laughs> this kind of stuff drives you nuts. There we go. So go to tutorials, go to V-Ray, and go to quick rendering setups. The rest of the links appear to be broken. I knew it was still here. And what I've done is I've, I've separated these into specific categories. So I have a basic day scene one. I have a basic day scene two. And you can see these little preview images that will let you kind of see what the clouds look like as part of it. Here's the next one there. And you can see there along the horizon a little bit of stuff. If we keep scrolling down here, I have a basic day scene three. A little bit different. You guys are going to end up using this as part of your um, final rendering. Then we go into some night scenes. And then we can get into some sunset scenes where the sun's actually setting, something like that. Okay, So we can put these as backgrounds. These are uh, set up for you so that long term you won't have to do everything that we're doing today. And I make a note of this under uh, part three today, part one, step three. There's a note that says you're going to get the HDRI file from um, the, ba the quick rendering setups page. However, please, for today, ignore the fact that I already have put in what specific date and time you should set the sun for because we're going to manually figure out how to do it. Because the assumption is that you will find your own HDRI image from somewhere and want to use it, in which case you'll have to set up these files yourself. OK, so uh, for this first one, this basic day scene one, we're going to want to download the, um, the files, the HDRI files for this. I have a click link here that will download the zip files. Furthermore, I have a link to where you can actually get them online if you're not logged in here. And this website actually has a really large number of HDRI files, some of which they want you to pay for, some of which they don't. So you can, you can browse around and see those. Obviously, I've cherry picked a few of the good ones. In rare cases, I don't have um, a direct link. I think most of these have a direct link. But sometimes you'll actually have to click, based on the um, distribution rights, you'll have to click and actually get it yourself. I put the link there. You have to go get it. I can't give it to you. Anyway, so for right now, um, I'm going to do this free 02 file. If I click on it, it will download as a zip file. It'll take a little bit of time to download. And I'm going to then use those files. So once this downloads here, actually, I probably already have it on my flash drive. Um, it's this one. We're going to look at what information is contained within this file. So I have a couple things. I have two HDR files. There's one and there's two. One is underscore env. That's the environment file. And the other one is underscore ref. So if I were to open the env file, we'd get this, which doesn't look like a whole lot. This is the light file. So remember, we talked about the background and the, um, the GI, the global illumination. If I go in here, I'll show you here. Under environment, we had two things. We had the skylight, or the GI, the global illumination value. And we also had a background value. This ENV file right here represents the reflected light. Reflected light is not a sharp cast. It's something that's a little bit modeled. So they give us a blurred version of the background image that gives us general light, GI. We also get a file. In this case, it's called REF. It could be called uh, background BG. It depends. And that's the sharp version. So here we are with the sharp version. We see the clouds. We see the sun as part of this. And we see the, the general context. The best HDRIs tend to be shot on a very flat level surface somewhere by the ocean because it's easier to get almost all of the horizon. So this is the file that I'm going to use. As I said before, there's more information here that says what our sun setting should be, what our camera setting should be, et cetera. Furthermore, there's a vizopt file that will preload all the settings for you so you don't even have to do it. 
We'll get to that in a little bit. But for today's exercise, I want you to manually have to figure it out. So we're going to go ahead and in our scene, we're going to load up these two things. First off, in this scene, I've already established a sun. You guys remember I had an environment, I had a sun. It's right here as a directional light that's been established. I'm going to leave that in place and on. I'm also going to go into my V-Ray options, and under my GI Skylight and under my background, I'm going to change the map. So let's start with GI Skylight. I'll click on the M, and I'm going to change, instead of using a text sky, which is what I used last time, I'm going to pick, once again, a text bitmap, because I have an image file for this. Then I need to go find, on my flash drive, See day HDRIs, and this was this version. I need to go find the environment, the ENV file. There it is. And I'll go ahead and say open. If I were to preview this, we'd see the blurried version. That's good. But I have to do one other thing, and that is at the very bottom of the page here, I have to change the UVW type to environment from channel. And when I, ch when I specify UVW general environment, I can choose my mapping type to be spherical, which has to do with how it applies this image to my scene. So I've changed the UVW to environment. If I preview it, we see much less of it because it's now part of a, a sphere instead of the whole image. So there it is, a UV general environment. I'll go ahead and say OK. And then I'm going to go into the background. And I'll do this more than once today, so you will see this happen. And in the background, once again, I'm going to switch to text bitmap. I'm going to pick the clear image file here. And I'll go ahead and say open. And once again, I'll scroll down to the bottom and change from the UVW type channel to UVW general environment. And make sure that the mapping type is set as spherical. And we can preview it and we can see it right there. I'll say OK. I will also point out, depending on the HDRI, sometimes if, the, if it's a really large HDRI file, you won't see anything in the preview. It'll be like white on top and black on the bottom. It's just the nature of it. I'll go ahead and say OK. So now I have a GI that's specified as an HDRI and a reflection or a background that's specified as an HDRI. So I have those two things put together. And if I were to do a rendering, we would get, I should have made this smaller, a background with clouds. But of course, you can't see them. We may also need to adjust my camera, my physical camera. The shutter speed might need to change based on that background light setting. So there, I've adjusted it. Let me go into my output. And I'm going to drop this size down for now. Just so that you guys can see the render a little bit faster. This is the other thing that you'll discover when we get into this phase of the class when I do these renderings. There's these pauses where it takes a few minutes for the render to show up. But I have to show you. I have to actually do it so you can see what happens.
Okay, so there's still some adjustments that I need to make in order to, to have the sky appear correct. And I'll show you where those adjustments are. But you can already see that the clouds are appearing in the sky where before I had just the plain, the plain sky. So I'll still make a few adjustments and I'll show you where those adjustments are going to be. But I at least wanted to point out that it's now rendering with the sky as a background. So from here, I need to make a few more adjustments. Number one, the sun doesn't necessarily correspond to the background image. So we opened this image, and the sun here is pretty high in the sky. I would guess, if I had to, to interpret this, that this was shot somewhere 1 or 2 in the afternoon, something like that, where my rendering has a sun that's much lower on the horizon. So I need some way of matching up my sun to the HDRI background. Now, if you went out and took your own HDRI background, let's say you went to a, a site, you were working on your 220 project, you went out to that rural site, you took an HDRI, you had a camera, you, you did this whole process, you would know exactly what time of day, what day of the year you shot the HDRI, so it would be easy to match up the sun. In our case, we don't know when this person shot this particular scene, where it was or anything else. So we have to figure out a way of adapting. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn off my, uh, let me make a new sublayer to environment. I'm going to call this thing sphere, sphere. I'll make it current, and I'm going to turn off everything except for the sun. Then I'll go ahead and while I'm on this sphere layer, I'm going to create an infinite plane. And of course it shows up somewhere where I can't see it. There it is. Let me zoom select it on it. There we go. And then I'm going to create a round sphere. Anybody been to like, uh, I don't know, your grandma's house and gone into the garden and she has like a mirror ball sitting there? I don't know. Maybe I'm being cliche by saying it's your grandma. Maybe it's yours. I don't know. I'm not trying to be mean. But have you ever seen those like garden ornament things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever looked in them? They reflect, right? They reflect the sky. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick one of those in our scene so we can see what's happening above us. So I'm going to go and create a sphere. And it really doesn't matter what size it is. I want that sphere to be up above the infinite plane. So I'm going to move that up above the infinite plane, about like that. Then I want to apply chrome, a very shiny material, to this object. So I'm going to go to my materials. I'm going to load a material. It is, Chrome already exists if you've downloaded the V-Ray materials. If I go into my materials, it's under metal. We're going to go to Chrome. And it's not blurry or matte, it's just the one that says plain Chrome. And so I'll load in Chrome, and I'm going to apply that Chrome to selection. So it's applied on that sphere. So now, if I were to render this, let me go back and set my rendering. If I were to render this, we get a really nifty reflection of the sky in our ball. We also get a reflection of the ground, the shadow, etc. Now notice the sun shows up reflected kind of over here, and my shadow is going the, the different direction. So I can tell instantly that these aren't matching up. It's usually a little bit easier to see it if we look at it in the top view instead. So let me zoom out, and we'll do a rendering straight down in the top view. Let me center it a little bit more so we can see it. There we go. OK, so it's actually not as bad as it looked. So there's my sun, which needs to be directly opposite where my shadow is. But the shadow is pretty long rather than being short. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make adjustments to this background HDRI, or I'm going to make adjustments to the sun itself, one or the other. And generally speaking, making adjustments to the background HDRI is a little bit easier. Unfortunately, in my case, I, I guessed last time and I ended up a little too close. So let me go back uh, and change the sun for just a second. And I'll talk you through this in a second, but I want to start with this so that's a little bit more off.
Okay, I just changed the sun, so it's at 9 in the morning. Okay, so now if I were to render, sorry, I guessed wrong. This is more likely what's going to happen. We do the render looking down in the top view. The sun is here, and the shadow is being cast out over here. So what I need to do is I need to shift the sun so that it's in its correct position. So what I would do is I would go into my options. I would go into my reflection. And right down here under the UVW, I have a opportunity to change the vertical rotation. So I can essentially take my background image and rotate it. So at this point, I have to be able to rotate it, and it's going to take a little bit of a guess. We'll start at 90. I'll say OK, and then we'll do a quick render and see what happens. So my sun was right here. Oops. It's supposed to be horizontal render, not vertical. Check that. Sorry. Horizontal render at 90, and I'll render. And so the sun was here, and you see that the sun is rotated by 90 degrees. So I have to keep going, and it's going to be more like, I would say, 230 or so. So let's say maybe 230, and we'll do a render. And now it's directly opposite where the sun is. So you see I rotated the background around to match up with the time of day that I set for the sun. The alternative to this would be to look at the sun itself and match the shadow to the sun. Or excuse me, match the sun to the shadow. So in that case, that's how I backed out and created, if you go to the course website, these settings. So if you were using the scene that we were doing, and you set your location to be San Francisco on May 2nd, 2016 at 2.30 PM with daylight savings time turned on, that sun would match up with the HDRI without having to change the rotation of the HDRI at all. So there's just two different ways of doing it. So if, for example, I went back here, and instead uh, I went to my options, and I set this back so that the rotation was at 0. And I rendered. We'd get the sun here. So the shadow has to go off in this direction. So in this case, I would go back to my sun, which is right there. I would go to Modify Sun. I'd have to uncheck, by the way, modify sun when you have the light selected. If you go to the properties menu, instead of texture mapping being available, you have a light settings available. And from there, you can click on modify sun. Uncheck manual control, and you have to go back through the process of finding San Francisco. So there's San Francisco. Then we come up, and we'd have to figure out my day and time. So we could go to, I said it was about 2.30 with daylight savings time. I'm jumping ahead. This would take some trial and error to get the, the appropriate time. I haven't adjusted the time of year, which is going to adjust how high the sun is in the sky. Um, it really should be a little bit later in the year. But I'll go ahead and say, OK, for right now, the sun changes. And I could then render again. Come on. So the best way of doing it would be to modify the sun to be the date and tie that time that matches the HDRI. Because then your HDRI is already set. You have north-south already set. And all you're worried about is just the time of day. If you do the rotation of the HDRI to match whatever your existing sun is, there's nothing wrong with it. But the likelihood of the angle being right is not as accurate. 
it will still be close enough. The biggest thing is that we want, and I have no idea why this is tanking out on me, is we want the sun to be directly opposite where the shadow is. And you can kind of judge based on how high the sun is in the sky as to how long the shadow really should be. So the purpose today is, yes, I have the actual settings of what you should have already written out for you. But instead of doing that, I want you to try to back your way into them. Figure them out you're on your own, because you could very easily not pick one of my couple existing scenes. You could shoot your own, or you could look online for HDRI background image and find one. So a couple other things that matter. Um, we, won't, we won't get into nights. You don't, you're not authorized to do night scenes yet. Okay, we, what are we on? We're on 216. I think we do night settings and lighting starting at like 222, 223. So after spring break, we'll come back and we'll do light. I promise, we'll get there, okay? But uh, some of the sunsets are also a little bit challenging because like this one, for example, the sun is actually below the horizon. So sometimes you need to make some other settings and some other adjustments to get good results. Uh, so as I said with this, and we're going to go with this as being um, already established. I'll go ahead and I'll turn off my sphere because I don't need that anymore. We'll turn that off. We'll turn back on the site and my blocks. I'm going to go back to my set view. We'll go to perspective two. There it is. Now, when I go to do the rendering, remember I went in and I adjusted my camera settings down to be 100. The sky was still too dark when I did that test rendering. So I'm going to do something else. And that is under the uh, environment settings, we already have those established. But right here under the, the background value, it's at 1.0. If I make this number bigger, the background gets lighter as a whole. If I make that number smaller, the background gets darker. So I probably need to bump this up to maybe 3.0 just to lighten up the sky a little bit more. I'll go back here and manually override. We did this at 100, and we'll do this at maybe 300. And I'll go ahead and do another render. And I think V-Ray is really mad at me right now. Give me a second to reset my um, V-Ray options. So let me do a height of 300, and this should be 100. My camera setting was at 100. And I said that my environment setting here, uh, it looks like I had already done it at 6.0. I'm going to do 3.0. These were the settings that I had. Then I'll go ahead and render. Whoops, my width and height are wrong. Sorry, hold on a second. 300, height of 100. There we go. Recognize another mistake. When I reset it, I lost the maps find those, so let me reload those really quick. So 
you can already tell in the initial stages of this rendering that the sky is much, much lighter. So it's some combination of values, uh, and you have to play around with those values there as well. Again, I tried to make life easy on you and establish some of the, the preliminary settings. So in this case, uh, it's telling you what the camera settings should be, etc. OK, so for today's exercise, I want you to load in, obviously, get everything ready, uh, which should be from last class. Then I want you to load in an HDRI GI, global illumination file, a background image, and be able to do a rendering with those. You can choose to match the sun to the HDRI or the HDRI to the sun. Either way is OK with me. But I would like you to go through, create the sphere, look at it, understand how to make those adjustments. Because I promise you, my handful of HDRIs are not the ones that you're ultimately going to end up using. You're going to create some of your own. You're going to find some of your own that you're going to want to use. There are better ones out there that you'll be able to find and use. So I'd rather have you understand the process for creating them. Everything that I talked about today is written up. If you go to Tutorials and then V-Ray, we come down here. There is a HDRI plus sunlight tutorial. This walks through everything that I did and shows you. The only difference is these images talk about it in perspective rather than looking down on it. I think looking at it in top view is much easier to see. And I should really update these images so that you can see them where we're looking down on it. But all, everything that I've talked about here is still valid. All right? Are there any questions? Yes? If you do it while it's raining, number one, you'd have to have an HDRI that was a rainy, cloudy sky. Uh, chances are, in that, you would overemphasize the HDRI global illumination because the cloudy sky, let's, let's use today as an example. Okay, if we were to walk outside and do a rendering, you can't see the sun. All the, all the illumination is provided from the reflection of the clouds. So what we would do is, in that sense, actually, the, the easiest way of mimicking your question would be to use, rather than using the, um, the cloudy skies that I've been using here, let's download the sunset, this one, and use that. So if we go here, so here's your example, OK? So the sunset scene here, it's available for free from this website. I can't legally give it to you. So you have to go there, and you have to purchase it for zero, which you can do. But you have to do it yourself. I can't do it for you. So I already have this one that's available. It's on my flash drive because I already went through this process of purchasing it. So let me go ahead and load that into my scene. So I'll go into my options. I'm going to go into my reflection or background. I'm going to go find that. I have it under sunset. I don't remember which one it was. Yeah, it's this one. And I'm going to load in, in this case, this was the reference file, and that's the environment file. So I'll load in the reference file for the background. We can see it, or in this case, we can't see it. I told you some of them wouldn't preview correctly. Then I need to load in the global illumination value, which was, oops, wrong one which was this one, the environment, the blurry version. And I'll load that one in as well, and we'll say OK. But in this context, the sun didn't exist. It's below the horizon. So I would need to go in, and I would need to turn off my sun. So I, have no, I no longer have a sun, but I still need enough light to resemble this particular scene. So what I'm going to do is, under the GI skylight value, and this would work for your rainy day situation as well, I'm going to change the value of this skylight to be much, much higher. And so in this case, I might start at maybe 10, 10 times the light coming from reflection because there is no sun. I also might have to go in and adjust my camera to have a little bit longer exposure. So we'll start it at 100, and we'll see what happens. So I'll go ahead and turn this off, and then we'll go ahead and render, and we'll take a look. OK, so we can see that basically nothing's happening. So I need more light in the scene. I need to bump up that value. So we'll go back here. We'll go to my environment. And let's try this at maybe 50. 
And then we'll go ahead and render again. Can you guys see anything? No, you guys can't see anything. I can see it. It's starting to show up right, right now. Let's see what I said were the actual settings. OK, so there's my GI skylight to 100. So I was still only at 50, so let's bump it all the way to 100. Go to Options, GI Skylight, let's go to 100. And let's go ahead and render that one more time. So it is rendering, it is lighter there, it's harder for you guys to see. The fundamental problem here is the direction of my view is looking opposite of the sunset. I'm looking east and the sunset is to the west. So if I wanted to see the sunset in the sky, I'd have to flip around and be looking the opposite direction. So it's not the best example. If I switched back into, uh, if I turned off the site and the environment and I turned on the sphere and I reset my view to be like this. And it's still too, it, it's there. Let me go ahead and I'll point out something else. So the other factor in this is when you get into these scenes, I told you that I already have this visopt file. This preloads all the settings. Looks like my shutter speed was at 50. So there's other settings that I've done. The visopt will load those settings. So if I download this and save it, I can go to my VRAI file here. And I can go right here to that little folder with the arrow. And it'll let me go find that visopt file. So I'll go into sunset, and I'll open up the visopt file, which of course is conveniently not there. Give me a second. Now watch, this is, not, this is like, oh yeah. So that's the other thing. If you click on it, it opens and makes a mess. Right click and say save link as, and let's put it where it belongs. V-Ray, HDRI, Sunset, and let's save it right there. All right, now I can go back. I can load this Sunset. There it is. I'll open it. It'll reset everything for me. And then let's try that render again. And of course, right? Why would anything show up for you? Oh, that's because I have to re-specify where the files were. Hold on. All right, one more time. Render. There we go. We can see the reflection there. That's part of the sunset. Looks like I was facing the wrong way. Let's do it again. There's the sunset. So this is achieved without a sun, but with a bumped up background global illumination. So in your example, which was a great question of how would you do it if it was raining, you would take that background that was the cloudy sky that was the rain, and you would bump up the reflected value from that. In this case, with the sunset, the sun's not up. We bump up the reflected value and can get the sunset. So now that that's established, I could turn back on my building site. Let's go back to perspective one. Let's give it a render and see if we can get the background as part of this. I don't know if this view shows enough sky. No, we're just going to get reflected value. Hold on a second. Let me switch to view two. Let me adjust my output. And we would get the sunset. Again, the angle is wrong, so I'm not getting the, the, 
the sunset in the background, though I probably will get a little bit of a reflection on the building itself. So that's how you would do something where the sun isn't actually visible. Most of the time, you're going to pick an HDRI during the day where the sun is visible. Obviously, at night, you're getting where we're going with night, too. Are there any other questions? That was a good question. I know it went off on a tangent, and maybe it went over everybody's head. But you'll get there, I promise. Don't worry. Yeah? So most of the HDRIs that you download will come with two files. So in this case, again, we're looking, a lot of them come with JPEGs and stuff too. We don't care about those. We care about the HDR files. And it's usually the file format is usually .hdr, though sometimes it's something else. So in this case, it's .hdr. Sometimes it's .ex something, exf or something. Um, and when you download them, generally there's one that's labeled environment and there's one that's labeled background or, or reference or something like that. If it doesn't exist, you can open in Photoshop the reference file, something like this, and you can elect to put a Gaussian blur on it. So if you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, you just have to bump up this value until you get it nice and blurry. And then you would save this as an HDR file. Okay, so it's possible if you had a file that you could create your own. Um, though most of the time somebody's already done it for you and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you mean if you created it? Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's been a while since I've done this, so bear with me for a second. Um, Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's bump this up a little bit there. Say OK. File, save as. It's called Radiance. It'll be listed from the list. At least it is here. If it's not listed there, I can come over and we can try to find it. Well, I'll come over and we'll, we'll have a look for it. But it should be listed under radiance or .hdr uh, that's there. All right, any other questions? No? Remember that this is a precursor for your assignment 203, which is coming. You're going to do this and you're going to do renderings. I'm expecting HDRI background and all that sort of thing. Um, so go back and, and review that. If you have extra time today, it wouldn't be a bad idea to start on that. Okay? We will continue with it as well. The other thing that you guys are going to get is your grade sheets. Okay? And I apologize, in this class it's really hard because you, you don't do anything for so long. And so you're just kind of floating out there. A um, couple comments about the grade sheets. If you were in one of my 135 classes, you're very familiar with how the grade sheets work. So I'm not going to go over it for everybody. If you were not in one of my 135 classes, I'm happy to sit with you and talk through what the grade sheets mean and what's happening. There's a lot of information on there. Um, generally speaking, the, the grades were not as high as I had thought they were going to be. I see frowns, right? It's OK. <laughs> Chances are the reason that they're not very high is because you haven't done any comments, <laughs> which everybody laughs about, right? So the good news is that comments can still be added, right? Uh, and so if you're, if you're not doing your comments yet, uh, adding your comments will definitely improve your grade. The other thing is right now comments are weighted too heavy. You guys remember this in 135. Comments are equal to like one assignment right now, so they're, they're really heavy in your grade. At the end, they're worth 5% of your overall grade, so they're not worth that much. So it's just the way the grade sheet works out. I expect you, as of this grade sheet, to have 10 comments. So if you don't have 10 comments, that's probably what's dragging you down. Uh, the other thing that tended to bring grades down for the last assignment was not actually reading the assignment and reading the part that you need three images of three different views. That generally dropped people down as well. The good news about that is you could resubmit your assignment. So you can improve that as well. Okay. Um, anything else about these? Attendance. If you haven't been here, or if you've been late, that counts against you, which would drop down your, your, um, your overall participation grade part of the class. 
the best thing that you can do there is show up to class, and life will be better. Most of you haven't had a problem with it, but for those of you that have been gone a lot, that can, that can affect your grade a little bit as well. Okay, so if you have questions on the grade sheets or what they mean, just let me know, and we'll sit and we'll talk through it. Uh, as is the case, or as was the case in 135, if you're missing exercises because you forgot to turn them in or you forgot to post them or something along those lines, no big deal, just post them. The other thing that happens is sometimes you turn something in and I miss it. It happens, I'm human, I make mistakes. Just come tell me and we'll fix the problem. That's part of why you get the grade sheets because it, you audit what I do and make sure it's accurate, okay? Any other questions? Probably not, all right. 